Today on the panel, we got some on spot comic reviews. We got a new PPP. We got a little bit of video games. We got some internet news. We got a lot. So we're going to talk about it quick. You're just <laughs> flying through these. <laughs> Wow. That's right. All right. That's right. Well, start us off, Jeff. What did you read? All right. Uh, today, I read the new title, Three, number one, by Kieran Gillen, Ryan Kelly, and Jordi Belair. Uh, new, okay, it's not necessarily a new take on the 300 Spartan type dealio because it's actually more historically accurate than 300 was, and it doesn't necessarily actually deal with just that event. It deals with the Spartans and how they train their soldiers and their society and all that kind of stuff, right? Almost a prequel, one might say. Almost, actually, yes. But not quite. It's just <laughs> it's just basically stories set in that time about who these people are and what they're for and what they're doing. A hundred times not as good as Frank Miller. I actually enjoyed it a lot. A but it's lot. a math joke. Oh, that's right. I didn't get it the first time, and I didn't get it this time. <laughs> that either says, A, a lot about the joke, or a lot about you. Either way. Let's say the joke. Aww. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so uh, I, I really enjoyed it. The art is fantastic. Ryan Kelly's done some work on uh, Northlanders for Brian Wood and various other things, and... Uh, Kieran Gillen has done Phonogram and Loki and Thor and all sorts of goodness. Pretty Uber. good. So, great, great book. Totally recommend it. It's out this week. Purchase it if you are able. I give it probably like four and a half out of five. Cool. I, uh, I delved into the realm of the unknown this week and uh, decided to uh, check out a book I hadn't read before. Because, uh, you know, I, it's kind of nice to talk about a book we haven't read or True read story. before. Because, you know, 90% of what DC publishes has Batman or Superman on it. 90% of what Marvel publishes has Avengers, Avengers or Spider-Man or, or X-Men. So yeah. it's nice to crack open something new. Uh, I read, Jeff gave me a copy of this new book to read uh, called Wraith by, uh, this is from IDW, right? Yeah, IDW. Yeah, by, from IDW. Uh, written by Joe Hill. Yeah. And uh, as people, as a uh, longtime fan of the show will know, I am a uh, big Joe Hill fan, loving Lock and Key, since uh, many a year ago when I first read it. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool to see another book by him. Uh, very, mm -hmm. very all on the same lines as uh, Lock and Key. Very, It's a horror comic book, mm. but uh, stars this uh, pretty cool main character. Charlie Manx, that's his name. And uh, yeah, he kind of has like a weird Joker vampire look to him, which I thought he was kind of vampire-ish at the beginning of the book, but uh, he's not, even though the license plate is kind of a cool little nod. But uh, the license plate for his car is explained throughout the course of the book, so I kind of I kind of enjoyed that. Uh, the art's really nice. It's got uh, kind of a, a painted roughness to it, which I appreciate. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fun little book to read. Dark and creepy as all get out, but it's such a cool little world that Joe Hill built for these characters. Uh, it's a five-part limited series, so I, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing where the story goes. It's about, uh, like I said, this Charles Manx guy, kind of uh, kind of an oddball character. and uh, has, uh, He seems oddball. He seems very oddball. And uh, kind of has a, a dark childhood and... Uh, Various macabre things happen to him during his uh, childhood. Kind of, kind of gets a little bit of a happy midlife there, but uh, things kind of go downhill for him, and he ends up being not a nice person. And he has some type of ability that really isn't fully explained, but kind of, it's kind of feels like a reality warping Proteus type deal that goes on with him. Mm. And he drives around in a Rolls Royce Wraith. So, thumbs up to class, Joe Hill. Nice, uh, if you're gonna pick a monster death car to have your guy drive around, why not do it in style, as Doc Brown would say. But, uh, yeah, like I said, cracked into the book for the first time. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'll want to see where this goes and how it plays out, so I'll definitely be in for the next four issues. If, uh, if you're a fan of Joe Hill's work on Lock and Key, I definitely suggest check it out. If you're a fan of, uh, macabre, dark, uh, comic book reads... Also a good choice. Yeah, so uh, check out uh, Wraith number one from IDW. Really, really enjoyed it. Good good little book. Way to go, Joe Hill. Cool, yeah. His stuff's always pretty good. So. 
You had a uh, trade review for us this I week, Jeff. I do. Uh, last week I mentioned I'd be doing this one, and it's uh, Quantum and Woody. Oh, that consistency. I love it. Volume 1, The World's Worst Superhero Team. I... I may have been talking over the title of the book, so you should probably reiterate. What was that title? <laughs> Volley. It's The World's Worst Superhero Team. Uh, the name of the book is The World's Worst Superhero no, Team? No, it's... You just said the, the thingy. The name of the book. In the whole thing. Okay. It's Quantum and Woody, Volume 1, The World's Worst Superhero Team. Uh, I did not go into this with high expectations oh. at all. Wow. Actually. Okay. Why? So, I'm not a big fan of humor books. <laughs> like, comic books, I should say. You love Archie, though. That's a whole different level. That's Archie's amazing. <laughs> it's, uh... It's genera- I hate humor books except for the humor it's book. I gener- like. <laughs> it's generationally fun. So generally, that's right. That's right. I don't even know how what it that never is. gets old. It's fun for all ages. Just and, like your uh, mom. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I like my jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. <laughs> there we go. Another beat to your mom joke. Okay, so trade paperback. So yes, um, so yeah, I'm not a huge, huge uh, humor book fan because I just find most people can't really write it that well. It's hard to write funny. Yeah, that's what I find. Yeah. Like over the course of let's say Spider Man's career, when he's delivering his one liners all the time, not everyone can do it, mm-hmm. right? So that's why I felt going into this. Uh, I didn't mind the first run with Christopher Priest from Acclaim Entertainment back in. What, 99 or something, or 2000, whenever it was, long time ago, <laughs> or 2000, yeah, I don't know, it was a long time ago. So long ago. <clears throat> so, this surprised me, it was actually pretty decent, uh, it's written by James Asmus, and drawn by Tom Fowler, who's kind of like an, sort of looks like Eric Larson type artist, hmm. and, um, uh, it's good, the, a lot of the humor comes from the sibling rivalry, because these guys are brothers, except they're not really brothers. Uh, Woody was a orphan that, uh, what's his name, Eric's father took in when they were young. So uh, Eric's father dies in this, and uh, they have to go and solve his murder and figure out what happened, and he was working on some super secret science stuff, and then they uh, somehow get their powers during the course of this little investigation and uh, packing up his stuff and whatnot. And, uh, it's, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, if you have a brother or sister, you'll, you'll understand this a lot. Because this is just the way brothers and sisters are. Mm -hmm. Or brothers and brothers. Or sisters and sisters. Or any combination. Mm -hmm. But, uh, lots of other little bits of humor and stuff, too. It's pretty funny. It's got some action. It's got intrigue. It's got everything that makes a good book good. So, if you like funny books, and especially Q on the funny, uh, check it out. It's from Valiant. The first trade is only nine ninety nine. You can't go wrong with the ten dollar trade. Uh, I give it a four out of five. I'm hoping it gets a lot better. It's not terrible by any means, but you know it can only go upwards. Cool. Well, hopefully. And yeah. Yes. Hopefully. There is a goat in it. As per the People last love series. goats. That's right. Gotta love super-powered goats. Oh, super-powered goats. Oh, yes. Even better. So check it out. Quantum and Woody, Volume 1. Nice. So you have a pendulum power panel. I do. I do, I do, I do. Uh, this comes from uh, Superman Unchained, number four from last week. Hmm. Rapid-fire heat vision. Oh, yeah. Rapid-fire heat vision. So it's uh, not just a stream of Not heat. just a stream. It's like a machine gun fire. And oh, yeah. he doesn't actually figure it out on his own. Uh, the character of Wrath, or whatever this guy's name, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, he's kind of like America's secret weapon Superman in this story arc. He was the one they dropped on Nagasaki instead of the atomic bomb. It was this dude. Okay. And they're fighting these giant Soviet um, spy robot things. And Superman's taking some damage and everything. And this guy's kind of like an older Superman-esque power type guy. He's yeah. been on Earth longer. He's absorbing more radiation than Superman has. So he's, his power is a bit more evolved. And he's strong, about stronger than Superman. And so he knows <coughs> how to use his powers a bit. And he's like, okay, rapid fire on these things. And Superman's like, duh? How okay. do I do that? But, question is, okay. 
what's the point of rapid fire heat vision? If you can already do a stream, why do you need to do short little bursts? Ah, uh, it's the same reason as more than one type of gun, I guess. Just like um, it punches through things a little quicker, and it kind of like yeah. if there's like openings and gaps, you might get some shots through or steady uh, treatment or not. You know, yeah, I guess so. But it was cool. Like he explains to Superman how to do it. Like it's a full bore uh, max heat uh, heat vision, and then blinking at super speed. Like oh, he actually explains how to do it, and then it's about a half page shot of Superman standing in the water in like the classic Jim Lee double fist pose mm -hmm. thing, like his chest billowed out, and he's like. Like oh, yeah. rapid fire laser beam eyes. It's really cool. cool. It's one of those shots where it's like this is kind of feels like a classic Superman move, mm. more so than the young brash cocky one that we kind of have now. I and uh, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, rapid fire heat vision. Really, really cool panel. Cool. Yeah. So we got some uh, internet news. Sorry, comic news. Internet news. It's all on the internet anyway. Comic news first. Yes. We'll do that. So James know. Robinson. Confirmed Fantastic Four number one. Yeah. Love it. We we kind of knew he was going to be doing it after Comic-Con. It kind of spoiled it, but now it's confirmed. He's writing it, and I'm so happy with this. It's going to be so cool. I love James uh, Robinson. We'll see. We'll see. Just the the kind of the setup they're going, the uh, the adversity, like, backs of building, they get booted out of it. Yeah, that's happened, like, a million yeah, times, know. though. But I think James Robinson's little angle on it with, like, the big adversity of the team that the family is going to be facing more so than the superhero team. Um, we've had our big outer space stuff with them for the last little while, so I think bringing it back down could be a nice little change of pace for the Fantastic Four. Keep the big idea stuff. Yeah. And the, the Alex Ross variant cover looks fantastic. Sure I'm not big on variant covers because they're often a lot more expensive and I don't want to pay for them. But if this one's not ten bucks, I'd be tempted to pick it up. Yeah, it just looks really cool. Uh, speaking of Marvel, this will not the biggest news, but a possible Storm monthly series. I'm not too keen on that one. No one is. I just they have other female heroes. Why do we always go back to Storm? Yeah, I don't get it. Plus, she's in. Wolverine and the X-Men. She's in X-Men. Yeah. And I don't think and she can carry her own solo I think she's in right something now. else, too, actually. I just don't recall at the moment. But yeah. hmm. She's in a lot. Yeah. She's like I the... Mean, she's a solid character. She's one of the best X-Men, but I don't... She's never been able to carry her title yeah. for that long before. It's been yeah. cancelled a bunch of times. So. Which Marvel seems to be kind of trying with uh, a bunch of X-Men giving them her own series for a while, seeing if it sticks, it doesn't cancel. Yeah. So, I'm not too looking forward to that yeah. one. Just, we got uh, yeah. that new point now, one, whatever Marvel's calling it, getting a new Wolverine number one from uh, Cornell and Stegman. Yeah. So, that was part of that whole teaser thing that was for Mortal that they caught out a couple weeks, a week or so yeah. ago. And he becomes a villain. A villain-esque. He's always been kind of treading that line anyway. So. He's working with villains. I mean, he's a bad guy. But uh, the new costume looks kind of neat, and mm. uh, now that he his healing factor is botched, yeah, kind of an interesting uh, little angle for Wolverine. Maybe actually some character development for the first time in a few years. That's uh, kind of nice. Maybe. And Paul Cornell writes a pretty damn good Wolverine, and Stegman's a fantastic artist. Kind of sad he's not going to be on Spider Man anymore. <coughs> but uh, I like yeah. him. I, li I love him on the Superior Spider Man. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I might check out Wolverine number one yeah. and those pair of guys. Uh, a little bit of DC. Uh, Jeff Johns gave a huge interview, I think yesterday, actually, about the future of DC and the after effects of uh, Forever Evil, which is ending, like, a million years from now. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> you know, when we wrap that up in 2015... Yeah, one of the little tiny bright... Well, I don't know. Bright spots for some, anyways. I'm not a big, I'm not the biggest fan, but a uh, new Booster Gold series quite Yay! possibly spinning out of that, so. Yay! Hopefully this booster is better, as, as good as the last one we had. Well, uh, from what they so said, good. they're taking pitches for a more grim and grittier version of Booster Gold. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's <laughs> great. If there's one thing I think of when I think of Booster Gold, <laughs> it's grim and gritty. I know. God damn it. If so, only DC had other grim and gritty characters. If only. I know. If only there wasn't just... There's not just, enough. There's not enough. There's not... There's just... There's way too many bright, shiny characters with a hopeful outlook on life uh, in the DC Justice universe. League. Yeah, I know. Fuck <laughs> this. I'm out of here. <laughs> God damn it, Jeff. So, I don't know. It could be good. 
It could not be good. We'll see. So, uh, bright spot for Gary there. And, uh... <laughs> Literally weeping. <laughs> uh, Valiant, uh... Did you read Booster Gold before the relaunch? Like, nah. spinning out of 52? Nah. It's fantastic! Nah. Written by Jeff Jones, even! Some of it, yeah. And it was great! Yeah. He was literally the greatest hero you'd never heard of. That was the tagline. He had to play the buffoon because if he was defending all of the DC history. You are a little upset about I, this. Oh, god damn it. Carry on. Using the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> Anyways, uh... Oh, no, what's he gonna do? Create a really shitty comic book out of one of my favorite characters? Oh, no. Uh, isn't that what they did with the whole DC universe? Uh, oh, snap. So, Take that, millions of dollars in revenue. <laughs> <laughs> so Valiant uh, has been re-releasing or releasing all of the properties they've acquired from the old Valiant slash Acclaim Entertainment over the last couple of years. One of the few properties they have not released is Rye. Everyone kind of wants to know where he is, what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he'll be you coming... Know, five of you online. Uh, there's a huge fan base. Um... He'll be making his way to your shelves at your local LCS in 2014 at some point. Don't know how, don't know when. The stampede has already begun. It has. More so than Booster Gold. Swear. Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt it now. So you have a little bit of uh, next-gen console news for yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, at the time of the recording of this, it's Thursday because of the shipping delay. But uh, one day away from next-gen... PS4 launches tomorrow, or midnight, they'll be having uh, some uh, consoles and lineups for people who probably didn't pre-order, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. So I got my email from Amazon telling me that my console will be shipping tomorrow. It wasn't my email telling me it shipped. That kind of pissed me off a little. But uh, yeah, I'm psyched to get my hands on my PS4. I don't have a game yet. Uh, it might end up being Marvel Lego Super Heroes, so oh, what a great right. test for my new console. But uh, everything that's been going on about, uh, what is it, so-called resolution gates, how the PS4 runs certain games native 1080p and the, the uh, X-Bone there, 720 and upscales. Really? People are losing their minds over it. I mean, it's not a super big deal now, but, I mean, TVs, you can't really see a great big difference if you have an Xbox One and you go to someone's house and you see a PS4. Side by side, you can kind of see a difference. Mm. But in a couple of years, when these machines are supposed to be lasting for like a decade, it's kind of their, yeah. their stretch goal for these new things. You know, when we start getting 4K TVs and that, you're going to be able to... I just saw those. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be able to tell a difference at games running native 1080p. Yeah. Um, everyone in the PC gaming community is just laughing their heads off. Ooh, 60 frames a second, 1080p. Yeah, five years ago. Whatever, I don't care. Yeah. So, it's kind of funny to see it, those sides of the world, but, like, the, the the guys that have been publishing these games are like, look at these great graphics, fantastic, 1080p on Forza 5. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and then you've got people saying, oh, it's not a big super deal. It's no big deal, this is 720. But you're telling people it's a big deal that your one game is 1080p. Yeah. So that's the Microsoft attitude for you in this era, which, yeah, there you go already. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it, the features are the same, gameplay is the same, as much gameplay as you can find in Call of Duty. But hmm. it's technically a difference between the systems. The PS4 is a more powerful machine from a tech standpoint. What you do with it is where it comes into play. So people losing their minds over it has just been kind of funny to be reading all over, all over online. But uh, depending upon how quick shipping is, it's from Amazon.ca, so I should be able to get my system relatively quickly. I'm hoping Monday or Tuesday, mm. so maybe by the next time we record this show, I'll have a quick little breakdown of uh, my new PS4. Cool. And maybe a game or two. Cool Yay. stuff. Got some uh, TV news. Had some kind of cool stuff from last week or so. Oh, really? Uh, I haven't seen the episode yet, but uh, Victoria Hand is apparently debuting on uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Who uh, cares? I love Victoria Hand. She was awesome. She was a great character that Bendis and Deodato, Deodato created uh, back during the Dark Avengers run with Norman Osborn, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Norman Osborn's right hand uh, woman, and she was a great character. She had, I like her in the comics. She had great depth. She had great personality. She had a backstory. She felt like a really flushed out character, and I was really mad to see them brush her off uh, during the changing of the guard with Bendis leaving the Avengers universe. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to see her continue to grow into the Marvel universe. So at least there's some version of Victoria Hand. I'm not sure how she's going to be portrayed in the show. We'll see how it goes. But I'm just I'm psyched that Victoria Hand is going to be shown. I'm going to guess as poorly as everyone else in the show is portrayed. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Your disdain for Shield is is no it's secret. It's pretty high. Yeah, it's pretty high. <laughs> but uh, biggest TV news was the Marvel Netflix deal. Holy that was pretty crap. big. Crap. Yeah. We're getting a Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist TV shows on Netflix starting yeah. next 2015, I think. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. So holy crap! And all 13 the, episodes each. Yeah, and, and all these minis lead into a Defenders series. Yeah. So friggin' awesome! Now these are all street level heroes, so that that gets rid of the budgetary questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can basically do cool stories with all of these characters individually yeah. and then tie them all together which is going to be great to see them in Defenders I can't wait to see costume designs and casting yeah I'm, I think the only one Daredevil and Iron Fist might have a costume I don't think the other two will yeah Ju- uh, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage I mean I don't know are we, is it going to be an alias series maybe I what's think our, that's what they're going yeah, for yeah what's our rating going to be on these are we going to be like AMC level are we going to I think be... so because it's direct to yeah so, I mean, we Whatever. don't have to worry about any language problems. We yeah. can do some dark, violent stuff. No there commercials. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just worried about this debuting on Netflix Canada. Hopefully they don't screw us yeah. up here in the Great <clears throat> White North, which is literally the Great White North because we got snow. <laughs> and I'm, I'm psyched. And Drew Goddard is going to be writing Daredevil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Should be pretty I'm cool. ready to go. So 2015 is not only looking for a great time <coughs> in theaters, but also uh, direct TV as well. Yeah. So holy crap, 2015 is going to be a fun year, folks. It should be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, tiny little bit more TV news, actually. Uh, if you haven't already watched it, because it premieres next week, but watch the prequel episode, Night of the Doctor. Oh New my god. Doctor Who minisode, starring Paul McGann. That's supposed to be a surprise. It is a surprise. That you just ruined for people. I didn't ruin it. I'm cutting that audio. It was on yesterday. So This morning. It was yesterday. I'm cutting that audio. Don't cut it. Nope. No cutting. <laughs> it's not a surprise. It's been released to the world, Gary. It's no spoiler. You told people to go watch it. If they hadn't watched it, you just told them. Who cares? Everyone knows who the previous doctors were. But not that he shows up in this episode. It was a surprise to me. Shh. I was kind of pissed off at Bleeding Cool that they put a still frame photo <laughs> of him know. in the title of it. Guess who shows up? No need to guess. Here's a goddamn photo of him. Come on. <laughs> Pretty weak, Bleeding Cool. He did an excellent job. Oh, so good. Excellent job. Kind of makes me want more, Paul. More, uh, more of him. We can say it. Who cares? Uh, more Everyone's going to watch yeah. it anyway. I want I want more of him showing up. I, I would know. like to see more of him. His audiobooks are cool and all, but I'd like to see and maybe it's a canon couple now because they're named his, his yeah. people that he was in. I kind of want to see a couple maybe telemovies yeah. or something. So I loved it. No stupid wig. So that was kind of awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I I love Paul McGann and Luther, and it's cool to see him get a chance to you know stretch uh-huh. a little bit more as the Doctor. Yeah, it so, was great, great, great. It's kind of weirded out about the whole younger version of the war doctor that we mm-hmm. kind of see in the reflection there i thought he was going to be like actually john hurt but yeah. I, I don't know how that works yeah i mean i'm assuming we'll get the answer in day of the doctor yeah and, we'll, we'll uh, see how it goes yeah. and we're getting the moment yeah gonna be cool. I can't wait. <laughs> if only we had a doctor who special coming out oh we do i know it's gonna be so good so uh do you have a segment for us i do I have an ire-raising segment to discuss. Our new segment here, debuting last week. Come on! My uh, my thing that's pissing me off this week is uh, Amazon and their just complete crap importing rules. Mm. I don't know if it's all Amazon or the country's I policies. I think it is. Well, can't, yeah. Shipping, whatever. It pisses me off. 
Amazon had a great deal. Buy two PS4 games, get one free. Now, I've said before, I don't have a PS4 game that I'm getting because the two I wanted got delayed. Was it Amazon Com or CA? CA was running the deal. So it was Com? Yeah. yeah. So Com's running this deal. Buy two, get one free. I'm like, okay. Um, Knack looks to be a cool original game. Nice little platformer. Sure, I'll get that one. Uh, me and my girlfriend like the Lego games. I'll get the Lego games. Mm. Um, I'll get Ask Creed, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, whatever, or Need for Speed Rivals, whatever. Fine, I'll pick one at the end of my day. Yeah. So I go through, add them to my grocery list there, and I go to file it up. Two of them are pre-orderable. One of them's available. Yeah. The available one is not available to ship to my country. Therefore, oh. the other two, when they become available, won't be. I checked the rules. Yeah, video games and stuff can't be shipped to your country. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I have money that I am going to... I'm paying the import fees on top of the shipping to That's my country. That's why every country has their own Amazon, Gary. Order it from ours. But CA wasn't running the deal. Then why that's would, our loss. If I can't order them from .com, why isn't CA running the same deal to allow me to do it? And Knack was 10 bucks more on .ca. On mm. Also complete crap. See, the thing, too, is Amazon.com runs the gold box deals. Amazon CA does not. Did you see the greatest deal ever on Amazon? Mm. The 50 Warner Brothers Blu-ray deal? Oh, that's an old deal, yeah. I saw that. $470 off? Yeah. 180 bucks for 50 movies? Yeah. It's sitting on my desktop right now in the shopping cart waiting for me to, like, <laughs> maybe click buy. Because that is a good... De- I'm kind of pissed they put all three Lord of the Rings in there. Yeah. They could have found three better movies to toss in, because everyone has those. Yeah. But yeah, this Amazon shipping stuff is just really pissing me off. Because I ha- I was going to give you money. Yeah. I was going to give you more money than I had to pay for the shipping and importing. Customer complaints are for. It was just complete crap. If you're going to screw people over, at least <clears throat> allow me to do it on the .ca version to get the same deal. It's all Amazon. Do the same deal. Come on. Got cool. some internet news. Cool. Internet talk and jargon. Hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. We'll do that. Yeah, you're, I'm really holding off as long as I can for your segment. <laughs> Second RoboCop trailer dropped on us this week. I liked it. Better than the first one, still looks unbelievably stupid. I would love to have oh, seen the, the now, amount huh? of high fives they gave each other when the robophobic line came up in the writer's room. And friggin' Omar sitting around in the office, the police station with Robocop. Bad cop, Robocop. He's just hanging <laughs> out in the police station with his helmet off. <laughs> what the hell? Stupid. The movie does look better in this trailer. It looks I'm, way better. I'm still on the trailer. fence about a fast running RoboCop. Technological yeah. advancement wise, I know you need to do it. I'm still, it just looks weird to me. And for the love of God, how much cooler does the silver suit look than the black? Yeah. Why they, like, if they'd left the silver suit for the whole movie, it would look better. But hmm. just these stupid lines, and I got a feeling the movie is going to be littered with the robophobic bad cop RoboCop. He pulls his gun out to prove that he's a badass mother. What? A- Come <laughs> on! This is not RoboCop sitting there in his this house. Sounds just like a continuation of your "Come on" segment. <laughs> yeah, they kind of bleed into each other every once in a while when RoboCop comes up with a subject. But Star oh. Wars Episode Seven now has a hundred percent confirmed release date, yeah. which pushing it back out of the summer cluster that is uh, 2015. Anchors the year, gets it away from everything else that's coming out, gives them well, more time on the movie. Not really, because as I talked to you about earlier today, they changed a bunch of release dates. Oh yeah, one of those release dates, which is gonna kill Star Wars right off, one week after Star Wars premieres, is the premiere of Mission Impossible Five, starring Tom Cruise. Who cares? Box office movie murderer. He will slaughter the competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure not. But Am I fine? I'm happy Star Wars has got a little bit more time because with the writer change and J.J. Abrams and everything, you know, a little bit more time on this, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing. Mm. And, you know, spread out the love for the movies in 2015. It was getting a little dense there. Well, they've the just summer. added like 10 to I the know, schedule. Oh, so. I know. I don't think it's going to be too possible. Just give me a season pass for the movies. Just so. let me spend my summer there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the pushback, and it's going to be cool to see a Star Wars movie around Christmas. Mm. It's going to be fun. 
Cool. The, uh, Kevin Smith did a podcast where he has seen not only the new bat suit, but he's seen Affleck in it. Yeah. And then totally copped out and give, didn't give us anything. <laughs> so he's like, oh, it's up to them to describe it. If it was up to them, they wouldn't have shown you. I know, exactly. Like, he said... He's like, probably told everyone he knows. I know. Well, he mentioned on the podcast the artist whose influence the suit was coming from, yeah. and then they redacted it from the record. Mm. So why? Come on. Come yeah. on, Kevin. Don't be a don't be a dick. So That should have been the name of my segment. <clears throat> don't be a dick. But, uh, yeah... I'll come up with a new segment to title that. But uh, he's saying how the suit never been seen like this on film before. So oh. hopefully it's not black rubber. Hopefully, you know, maybe we get a little bit of gray in there. Maybe a bat symbol that you can see. Christopher Nolan. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't have a cowl and a cape for those three movies, you couldn't have told that was Batman. Mm. You couldn't see the damn logo. Especially in Dark Knight Rises where it's like half as big as it was in Batman Begins. Yeah. It's just, just look at the symbol. I'll give you that look point. Look at the symbol. I'll give you that point. Same problem with Brandon Routh's suit in Superman Returns. That was a tiny S. The first thing you're supposed to see is that S coming at that you. That was tiny. Like, if you're a bad guy, you're screwed. If you're if you're in trouble, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Design flaw. At least, at least uh, Zack Snyder got that cool symbol yeah. right in the new one. But, yeah, give us a bit more details. Like, you can tell us the artist that it's from because the artists have drawn the suits in different ways over the years. Exactly. And, I mean, are we, it's, uh, one of the rumors was it's going to look a lot like uh, Batman Noel, mm -hmm. which would be cool because it's gray and black with a cool symbol, little yeah. tiny ears, which I'm fine with. So, hopefully, I mean, it films such filming in the, what, spring next I year? So, I mean, we're going to see shots soon. Kevin Smith has talked about it. Let's get costume designs out before we get leaked photos again. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they did a good job with Superman <clears throat> during uh, Man of Steel shooting. They brought that cool photo out of what he looks like. So let's do the same thing with Batman. All right, cool. All right, Jeff, ruin my day. So uh, I have a new segment called Don't Be a Dick. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> now, here I'm going to uh, cue up some mock rage. And, uh, no, seriously, is your title called Don't Be a Dick? Well, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to queue up some... I'm going to get a uh, goddamn it count on this episode. Queue up, yeah, it's too many. <laughs> I'm going to queue up enough. some mock rage. It's and uh, As I do that, I will also be mocking Gary from a previous episode. <laughs> odds are I don't remember what you're going to be mocking me, so... Oh, odds are you will remember, because I'm going to talk about it right now. <laughs> so in a previous episode... Or I should say Minisode, we talked about Star Trek Into Darkness. The cinematic masterpiece of the That's year. right, and J.J. Abrams. How come people don't give that movie shit for the mass murder that was committed? Okay, we're not talking about that. Just right? That the go. Vengeance know, took out a I lot know, of buildings. So, in that, here's uh, Kirk and Company coming up on uh, Klingon home planet Kronos. And on the screen comes a big word that says Kronos. What's up with that? It was dumb. So, Thor 2, what were you thinking? Asgard, and then there's the word Asgard. Oh my god! What were, we, were you thinking? Were we told five seconds previous that we were going to Asgard? Also... My context of that <laughs> comment was, as you pointed out, eight people said, we gotta go to Kronos. Five seconds later... Kronos. Did ten people say we're going uh, to Asgard, then show you Asgard? You also said everyone would knows knows what Kronos is, etc., etc. Because they were just told we were going there. Did Same thing with Asgard. Answer the question. Everyone knows the what question. Asgard is. Was I'm it doing the, it. Was it the introduction of, is it the first time in this movie we see Asgard? Well, of course. It was the same thing in that movie. First time we see Kronos. <laughs> did someone say we're going to Asgard before the title no, they popped did up? not. Boom! But like the Star Trek one, you said in that mini-sode, hey, everyone knows what Kronos is. Why'd they have to put the big because word on the screen? Because we were just told we're going there. Doesn't matter. The, the narrative it's for just the gave audience. you the, But the narrative just told Doesn't you... Doesn't matter. This ship and this crew is going to this location. No. Okay, the audience is dumb. We better tell them we're it's at the, the location. It's the same thing no, with Thor 2. It's completely different. Why'd you have to put Asgard on the screen? Oh, then you put London, England on the screen. What's going on? Everyone knows what London is. Oh, my God. Svortelheim. Everyone knows where the dark elves live. Come on. 
Everyone no, you're, knows you're, you're, you're going way overboard now. <laughs> I said it was mock rage. This is... <laughs> and then my rage kicked in. This is bullshit. <laughs> no. I am seeing it tonight, and I will I will record my own mini soap when I get home, or on the car ride home, into my phone, and then post it. And just a complete ass. This is wrong. So anyway, thanks for tuning into the back on the scene. So there's my new segment, Don't Be a Dick. <laughs> so- <laughs> you're a dick. You're a dick. You know why you're a dick? Because you're a dick, you dick. Uh, I really hope there's no new YouTube thing about how many times you can say dick in an episode or I something. I don't think so. But, uh... If you, f- if you feel we have said dick too many times in this episode, feel free to make a Google Plus account and comment on this video. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was the same thing. Oh, it's completely different! No, no. It was the same I will see it tonight, thing. and then we will rage about you this next week. You rewatch that minisode... I know what I said in the mini I also know what you said in the mini So, there. And my entire point was that you had a character state, almost to the camera, <laughs> by the way, that we are going to Kronos. Five seconds later, Kronos. Yeah. If it's Darcy, to aid audiences. If so Darcy they or know. Thor or Selvig had said, we have to go to Asgard. Five seconds later, Asgard. That's fine. That would have been this. I would have had the same issue Maybe with it. Maybe it's for the hearing impaired. Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think of that? Maybe it's for the visually impaired. I don't know. <laughs> it's for the visually impaired. <laughs> maybe. maybe Do you they... know how visual impairments work? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. They put the subtitle up in case you can't read. <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe it's for someone who's dyslexic. Is this your is this your train of thought? Exactly. Now? God Maybe damn it. This heard has gone on. Your segment's wrong. gone on too long. So anyways, because Gary just kept going on and on and on <laughs> and on after I try to get out my wonderful new segment. I am reclining and taking a nap. Let me know when the show's done. Don't be a dick with Gary <laughs> Son of on a the bench. <laughs> Uh, if you uh, like this rant and raving of our insanity, check out our other episodes here on the channel. Check out Jeff at uh, uh, the TelltaleMind.com and on Tumblr at MindMelds-Home.tumblr.com. You can uh, find me at the Wagnerock on Twitter and uh, Shelf Life Wagnerock dot WordPress dot com. <laughs> kind of mixed up there. Yeah, we're also I've, on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, you can check us out. The yeah. Pendulum Podcast there. Check That's us right. out. Uh, my life is kind of calming back down a little after a chaotic couple of weeks of uh, helping out some people who are near and dear to me. True. So uh, I can get back into doing some posts and reviews. Uh, I've got a new Black Adam figure from DC that I get a review up of, and I picked up uh, Striker Eureka mm. from NECA Studios figure. So I'll be doing a review on that. It's spoiler. It's in, friggin' awesome. In two weeks, because next week is our big Doctor Who special. Yeah, it is. It's going to be amazing. It's pretty good. we got a couple of guest stars. Jeff reveals yeah. his true feelings about our Doctor Who character. I think we all do, actually, on various fake Doctor Who characters. Yeah. This does not single we... me out. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your ire is singled out. I really? Think. I don't think it was as great as your ire today on a number of subjects. Well, this yes. is pretty much the Gary Rages episode. Yeah. So, I don't uh, want to rage in my heart. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, so it's going to be great. Check it out. Hopefully have it up Tuesday, day early. Oh, hopefully. It will be. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we are aiming for a Tuesday release. So it gives you lots of time to listen to it before the Saturday premiere of Day of the Doctor. Uh, we talk about a premiere. all sorts of wonderful Doctor Who-ish things. who this? So, uh, should be pretty, it's pretty sweet, I think. Pretty sweet. So, no new episode next week. Doctor Who special. Check Tune that in. out. And in two weeks, or the week after next, however you want to say it, we'll be back with all our regular features. I did not do my real new segment this week. I'm just going to wait till next month because I have no time on my hands. So, there. Ah. It is not Don't Be a Dick. Ooh, that, is, segments. that is not a segment. And it never will be a segment. <laughs> But, uh, not yet. 
We'll have new power panel, new on the spot reviews, new trade reviews. Gary will be doing a trade review of Saga Volume yeah. One since he's finally. Spoiler! To, it's also pretty good. Decided to break down and crack that one open. I think it has probably the greatest first page out of a comic book I've ever read in my life. All right, we'll save it. Save it for the uh, for, for when we come just back. Teasing them. Just teasing All right, them. tease them. Tease it. So. Tease it. Check out our episodes. Check out our. We already did the Hawking part, Jeff. I know. Now we're going to wrap we'll, up. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Soon. Yeah.